Okay, chapter 16. Feasting on juicy peaches. Minley and the dragon walked through the woods for many days. At night, when the dragon slept, Minley missed Ma and Ba. But this is for our fortune, so they don't have to work so hard anymore, Minley told herself when she thought about the worry her parents must be feeling. When I get back, Ba can rest and Ma will never have to sigh again. They'll see. But the lonely moon never seemed to gaze comfortably down at her. One day, Minley and the dragon came upon a body of water. In the distance, they saw the woods continue. As the compass pointed across the water, the dragon swam the inlet with Minley riding his back. How far do we go before we get to Never Ending Mountain? The dragon asked. Oh, so it'd probably be, how far do we go before we get to Never Ending Mountain? The dragon asked. Well, Minley said slowly, the fish said to go west until I reached the city of bright moonlight. Once there, I'm supposed to find the guardian of the city. The guardian, Dragon said. Who's the guardian? I'm not sure, Minley said. The king of the city, I guess? Once I find him, I'm supposed to ask for the borrowed line, which, according to the fish, is something I'll need for never-ending mountain? The borrowed line? Dragon asked. What is the borrowed line? I don't know, Minley said. The fish didn't tell me. Oh, and you did not ask? The dragon almost stopped swimming in surprise. I didn't want to delay her, Minley said. She was in a rush. The dragon shook his head and opened his mouth to say something when they both heard a strange sound next to them in the water. Aunt Jin! Aunt Jin! A voice said. Is it you? You came back, like you said! Dragon and Minley looked in the water and saw a large orange fish with a black fin swimming next to them. It looked a lot like Minley's goldfish, but much larger. Oh, I'm sorry. I think you must have me confused with someone else, Minley said to the fish. I was speaking to the dragon, the fish said. But you must not be Aunt Jin, either. Whoa! The dragon looked down at the fish with a wry smile. Either one of us would be a very strange relative to you, fish. What makes you think I'm your aunt? Oh, because Aunt Jin always said she would come back to show us the dragon gate was real. The fish said. What do you mean? Minley asked. The dragon gate? What's that? That must be the Dragon Gate. The story of the Dragon Gate. Even though no fish has seen the Dragon Gate, we all know about it. Perhaps the story was told to us through the waves of water while we were eggs or whispered to us by the roots of the lotus flowers. We all know that somewhere in one of the rivers of the land, there is a great, powerful waterfall. It is so high and so vast that it is, as if, it is as if water were gushing from a cut in the heavens. At the top of the waterfall, beyond anyone's view, is the Dragon Gate. The Dragon Gate is an entryway to the sky. It is old, 
so old that it's possible that the gray stone columns grew from the mountain it stands on. Wind and time have worn and smoothed the gate's old carvings of the five colored clouds of heaven. Wait, I messed that up. I'm going to read that sentence again. Wind and time have worn and smoothed the gate's tiered placards that barely show the old carvings of the five colored clouds of heaven. Above the placards are the tiled arches, the same color as the misty sky. 999 small dragons, small dragon ornaments perch on the ridges of those tiled roofs. Each one is intricately formed to the smallest detail and even weathered as they are, the black pearl eyes still flash with a mysterious power. That is because these dragons are not mere decoration. They hold the secret to the dragon gate. For if ever a fish is able to swim up the waterfall and pass through the gate, the dragon will shake with power. And when the fish goes through, its spirit enters the gate and bursts out of one of the ornaments, changing the fish into the form of a flying dragon. And that is the story of the Dragon Gate. So, the fish said, the Dragon Gate transforms fish into dragons, a wish many of us hold deep in our hearts. The fish finished. None know who first told the story, or if it is even a story at all. But Aunt Jin was determined to find out. She said she was going to search all the rivers of the land. And if she found the dragon gate, she'd come back here as a dragon to show us. That's why I thought you might be Aunt Jin. Did, um, did your aunt look like you? Minley asked. Orange, but with a black fin? Yes, the fish said, but much smaller, the size of a copper coin. Uh, it doesn't seem likely that a fish that small could swim up a waterfall, the dragon said. Even if she does find the right river, she might not be able to get to the gate. Well, if there is a gate, Aunt Jin will find a way through it, the fish said. She is very wise. If you knew her, you'd understand. Um, maybe I do know her, Minley said softly, thinking hard about the goldfish she'd set free. Could it be that her goldfish, who had swum all the rivers except one, had been Jin searching for the dragon gate? Oh. Well, if you are not on Jin, the fish said to the dragon, interrupting Minley's thoughts, why are you swimming across the river? Why don't you just fly? Yeah, he can't fly, Minley answered for the dragon, when she saw that the dragon was uncomfortable. So we're actually going to see the old man of the moon to ask him how to change that but we have to cross the river to get to the city of bright moonlight first. Old man of the moon, the fish said. Good luck. Finding him will be harder than finding Dragon Gate. Minley and the dragon looked at each other and shrugged. But the city of bright moonlight is just past the forest over there the fish continued. Swim over to this side and you can see it in the distance. So, just as the fish said, Minley and the dragon saw the city, an enormous wall like a giant patchwork curtain of stone surrounded the thousands of houses in the city and almost glowing with the splendor of its red columns and a golden top a palace stood up over the clusters of buildings in the far center 
like a glorious boat floating above the waves of the scalloped rooftop tiles. Even from a distance, the city looked majestic. If you are stopping at this city of bright moonlight, the fish continued, I think Dragon here should probably try to stay hidden. People of bright moonlight might be shocked to see a real dragon. The last dragon sighted was almost a hundred years ago, and it destroyed the king's father's palace in the city in the east. They might not take too kindly to you. Well, that is certainly good to know, Minley said. It might be better if I just go into the city by myself. Yeah, the dragon agreed. I can hide at the edge of the forest and I'll wait for you. Well, they close the wall at night, the fish said. So if you are in the city at night, you have to stay until morning. Don't worry, Dragon said to Minley. I will wait. Well, you are almost to land, the fish said. So I'll leave you. If you ever see another dragon, find out if it is my Aunt Jin. I hope you get to meet the old man of the moon. Good luck. And Minley and the dragon watched the fish swim away. Then they made their way to the land and the city of bright moonlight. Chapter 17 Minley gulped as she walked toward the gray stone wall of the city. As she passed the two stone lions marking the entrance, she glanced behind her. Even though she only saw the trees and shadows, she knew the dragon was hidden there. Quickly, she pushed through the doors of the gate, leaving the forest and the dragon behind her. As the gate closed, Minley stared. The streets were crowded and bustling. The city seemed to be bubbling with people like boiling rice. Vendors selling fruit and shoes, calling out their wares while people rushed past. Some pushing wheelbarrows or balancing baskets on their shoulders. A large, muddy water buffalo, led by a boy perhaps a year or two older than Minley, wandered through and was ignored as a commonplace occurrence. Watch out, little mouse, a gruff man said behind her, his baskets of cabbages driving her into the crowd. As she was shoved and pushed, Minley grabbed the arm of the boy with the water buffalo. Hi, she said. If I want to see the king, where do I go? The king? The boy looked at her and surprised. You'd have to go to the palace. So how do I get to the palace? Minley asked. Well, just follow the black stones, the boy said, pointing at the road paved with polished bricks. They'll take you to the city. Wait, Minley said. Isn't this the city? The palace is in another city? Oh, <laughs> you must not be from around here, the boy laughed. The city of bright moonlight is divided into two. This is the outer city where anyone can live and travel. The inner city is where the palace is. That's where the king and the officials live. You have to have permission, though, to go to the inner city. If you don't, you're not going to be able to see the king or the palace. There's thousands of guards protecting the inner city. They won't let anybody through without permission. Well, I'll find a way, Minley said confidently. Thanks. And then she let go of the boy's arm and headed towards the black road. However, as Minley got closer to the inner city, she realized the boy was right. The red walls of the inner city loomed tall and forbidding and every gold-studded gate door was guarded by at least two soldiers. 
their silver armor reflecting in the hot sun. It would be a daunting task just to enter the inner city, much less find the palace and the king. But I must, Ninli said to herself. Regardless, the guards' faces were stern and hard, and she quaked inside. If I ask to go in, Minley thought, as she hung back among the fruit stands and fruit vendors, they're either going to ignore me or force me away with their swords. And either way, I won't be able to see the king. Oh, what should I do? Ha! <laughs> Not as easy as you thought, huh? A voice said next to her. Minley turned and saw the buffalo boy standing next to her, and Minley gave him a wry look. Boys, she thought to herself, always thinking they know everything. Still, she had to admit, he was right. She had no idea how she was going to see the king. They must let people into the inner city sometimes, Minley said. Yeah, they do, the boy said. Once a year, at the moon festival, they open the gates to everyone. When's the moon festival? Minley asked. Ah, it already happened, the boy said. You're going to have to wait until next year. Minley bit her lip in frustration. What was she going to do? You know, I don't really know why you want to go in there so badly, the boy said. The buildings and clothes are nicer, but the people, a bunch of puffed up frogs. At the moon festival, one of the stable men wanted to order me around and thought he could trick me into thinking he was the king. But when I asked why he wasn't wearing a golden dragon... He knew his prank wasn't going to work. Did he think I was stupid? Everyone knows a golden dragon is always and only worn by kings and the emperor. The people in there think that we're a bunch of dumb oxen. The buffalo besides the boy gave a snort at that. <clears throat> Sorry, the boy said and patted the buffalo on the nose. You know I didn't mean that. But by this time, the inner city guards had seen them lingering at the gate. You there, kids, one of them barked. Move along. Come on, the boy said, tugging Minley's sleeve. Let's go. Minley followed him and the buffalo. Where are you going? she asked him. I'm going home he said. You can come too if you want. And since Minley had no place else to go, she did. And that's where we stop for today. <laughs>